A big round of applause for the lovely ladies on stage. Thank you. Okay, Pranita, I'm going to start with you. The topic is sexism in cinema times up. Tell me honestly, you know, I've spoken to a lot of leading ladies in the industry. How tough is it, you know, to deal with producers, to deal with actors beyond the screen? You know, we've heard horror stories. Would you share some? Good evening. Good afternoon, everyone. So firstly, I think um, as an actress, this is what I've been told, this is not even my statement, that the actress or the heroine as they call it, she comes last in the hierarchy. So she takes, she has the least power in terms of decisions. So if I have to recall one incident, there, uh, there was this uh, film I was doing which had a very beautiful character, it's the wife of an Axolite and you know how, what she goes through and in the end, in fact, she's the only survivor, everybody else dies and her point of view and everything. But uh, you know how in every film there's an introduction scene for every character. So mine had one as well and a very simple scene. So there's a supercar that comes in front of a massive bungalow and it stops because I play a politician's daughter in the film. And I get down and I have to just run to my room. As simple as that. So I did that and then when I saw it on screen, it was completely out of hand because the camera angle was not in my uh, hold and the camera was somewhere above and the whole running shot on the staircase was a slow motion shot, something like a Baywatch or, what, or you know, on the lines of those. And it's, it's really, it just blew my mind that how something as simple as that turned out to be something so, uh, so I don't know, up to an extent, I was embarrassed watching it in front of my parents, with my parents. So I think this is the level of, uh, you know, powers or the kind of decision making uh, powers that we have. You know, let me be direct. The, the term floating around now is flaunting your assets. You know, that's, what, yeah. that's what they say. Do they right. brief women about that? I mean, is it so uncomfortable on the set? We know the male to female ratio is insane. I mean, uh, Shruti just told me that a hundred men yeah, on a set 3%. for about three or four women. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's, that's the way it is. Um, I have been on sets where I've been the single woman on a set of 100 men and we've still made the film and I had no problems, let me also say that. However, however, uh, extending on what Pranita is saying about the lack of decision making, the power to decide, um, is also because I think there is absolutely no depth in how the character is developed. They, do, they just require the woman to be a pretty face on screen, as you said, flaunt your assets. And that's all. And that sells. And that's sad. It's very sad that the body sells. It's very, very sad that today um, a girl is somebody's daughter. Okay, so when I say this, okay, let's look at the occupations. It's very interesting, okay? From whatever I've read, a man can be a doctor, a lawyer, give me professions, a journalist, yeah. but a woman, a scientist, but ma'am, what can a woman be? Uh, some, Mr. Eddie's daughter. The woman nice. can be sad and depressed. The woman can look good. She can flaunt a good smile. Oh, one second, not just a good smile, a resplendent smile. I know a director who's actually, Pranita and I were talking about it. The director, one of the most popular directors of Kannada cinema, Heledru, that one henna na nodre, hero na nodre, ah, unspeakante. That's all they need. And that's popular. That is, but, oh, that is also a trend in the industry, you know, it's been going on for ages, this is not a new phenomenon. And now people have started talking about it, especially because Hollywood, what's happened there? You know, they've just opened this can of worms. But is it really the tip of the iceberg, is what I want to know. Because there is, as we were discussing earlier, a lot of women just choose to be silent. You can't really say anything because these are powerful men in powerful positions who you don't really mess with. They're just calling the calls and that's where I come back to what Bina ma'am was saying that women need to open out from being just pretty faces on screen. There needs to be someone like her and complete respect to her for what she does. She's a film editor, one of the leading <laughs> film editors. Ma'am, take it forward. One I of the very few, may I add, yeah, Bina? Very few female film editors, yeah. yeah. Well, actually that's a very sad thing because the world over editing is the feminine pr profession, <laughs> which is another little box that we all get into. Uh, so editing, which requires patience, which requires concentration. Yeah. Technical, Technical knowledge. knowledge. Yeah. But uh, 
you know, apart from what uh, these ladies have just said, and I know that this is a real concern, uh, I would also like to bring uh, another kind of perspective to what's happening in the film industry, uh, which is the fact that uh, because of the lack of women, not only uh, on sets, but in, any, in many, many aspects of filmmaking, uh, many aspects of policy making, uh, many aspects of uh, the creative process, what happens is we're totally underrepresented. And I think all this arises out of that. Um, I mean, you can talk about facilities, you go onto a film set, there won't be toilets for women, uh, you have a complaint, you don't know who to complain to, uh, and these are realities in a country where you have the, great, uh, you know, most the most... Most uh, number of films in the world. Most number of films in the world, and you have very stringent laws. The Bishakha guidelines are there. Uh, there are very stringent laws. Nothing in, uh, exists in the film industry. So these are, these are our concerns, frankly. I mean, uh, I think a lot of this gets answered when a lot of that gets addressed. That is the... And I also think, sorry, just adding on to what ma'am said, I also think that reflects in every other industry apart from just the entertainment industry. I yeah. know that women are not just, they are underrepresented. And that's a problem too. Okay, let's now come to another serious issue. We've heard about the casting couch phenomena. We've heard about producers asking for favors. Young women in the industry, have you faced that challenge? Have you faced producers who are trying to take advantage of young women? So I think... Uh, or actors? So I've been lucky that I've got a chance to work with some of the nicest people, but I'm sure it exists and... I'm, but I think that's a different story, but even if it's something as small as voicing out your opinion, I think you're going to face a lot of back backlash. Uh, be it Parvati, who recently uh, commented on a Superstars film and how he shouldn't be promoting Miso Gaini and how he, she was bashed and she had death threats and rape threats coming her way on social media. So that is the state of affairs. If there's anybody who wants to voice out, there are n number of people, fans and random people, anonymous accounts waiting out there just to bash you. And there's, some, there's this very simple thing that happened. So there was a film of a superstar uh, where the poster in which he's walking and the actress is crawling behind him and another actress who's not part of the film commented about it and uh, nothing, she didn't even mention the film or the poster. She just said it's regressive about, and she, it was a twisted tweet with nothing to do with the, I mean, she hinted at the film but she didn't mention the film. But uh, the fans of the superstar took it to such a level, they started trending a hashtag, we hate XYZ. So that is the level, if that's the level of, you know, uh, freedom that we have and if nobody's going to respect their opinion, so nobody's going to come out. Shruti, for you? Wow, okay, so I agree, social media has so much power. But uh, I've had a very different experience from Pranita and I'm going to be honest about it. I have been honest about it from the beginning of my career, so I do not think I should lie now. Um, I've had experiences of the casting couch. I've had experiences of it when I was 18 and when I was probably going for the meeting of my first Kannada film. Um, it did leave me so scared and petrified that I remember crying and running back to, I was a dancer before I started acting, so that's just uh, for those who do not know. So while I was dancing, I went back to the choreographer and I said that, Aurhing um, Madhadro. And then he looked at me in the eye and he said, if you do not know how to handle this, stop doing what you're doing. Turn back, go away. And this is what he tells me. Um, I did not obviously do that film, but it went on to when a producer, one of the leading producers in Tamil cinema today, bought the rights of one of my Kannada films and they approached me for uh, playing the same role that I played in the Kannada film. And this is what he said verbatim on a phone conversation. Uh, and this is exactly what he said. I immediately can said... You, can you translate that? Sorry, okay. So in Tamil it means we are five producers and we will use you and exchange you however we want. Am I right? Yeah. We will use you and exchange you. We will exchange you. you amongst us however we want. Over a phone conversation. Those who want to believe me can believe me. Those who don't, 
I don't care. But this is my experience and I will not lie about it. I remember this and I immediately told him. So this was after three years after my first experience, four years after my first experience. By then I had learned to say that, Sir, I am going to go to my hand. I am going to go to my hand. What that translates into is that I carry a slipper in my hand. So you come to me and where uh, that The word spread that I am a weird and difficult person to work with. I have ever since not received good projects from Tamil cinema since then. Producers who know that producer, sorry, ma'am, you saying something? Producers who know that particular producer actually comes back to me and says that we heard about this. What is this? And and it's appalling. I, I don't I do not want to blame that. Maybe I'm not good enough. Okay, let's keep that option also open. Maybe I'm not a good enough actor. I do not know. But <clears throat> Uh, it didn't come my way and I did not know what to do. So, however, now just adding up to end what the casting couch should be. It should have more n number of women standing up and saying no to it. You need two hands to clap. Do not blame just the men. Do not just say that because they come and approach me, I should say yes. Yes, ma'am. Also, I think you should have a system to be able to report this. Exactly. Where do we go? Where does an actress like Shruti... Uh, we were discussing this the other day, how we should to? all come up with all the actors together, directors, all the, uh, not yeah. only, fe no, no, not only female technicians, including the men, to come together and have a committee exactly. where you can complain in anonymity. Exactly. So isn't that what is important? Because today, if you put your name out there and say this person did this, so then obviously people are going to backlash in what she faced. So I think it's really important that somebody has to, you know, hold your identity and still let it out and take action. So that is what is the Correct. need of the hour. Correct. And it's so important to remember that, that, that the casting couch will give you your first opportunity but will not help you survive. And that's the plain damn truth. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but you know, uh, what you're saying is absolutely appalling. But it's not shocking to me because covering the film industry for 13, 14 years, I can tell you I've spoken to so many leading ladies who've told me horror stories. Vidya Balan, national award winner told me she went for an audition when she was young, producer started staring at her chest, she was with her father, she had to leave, did not do that film, but imagine what it does to a young actress. Perception, you know, perception on the screen, off the screen that we are building for women, you know, as we were discussing, reduced to being props, you know, reduced to being arm candy for this macho hero. As you said, the shots that we take off women, you know, they're only about flaunting the assets, about but that on perception. A, but on a on a positive note, Shashant, it's changing. It is. I was just For sure changing. I, I have been lucky enough to be part of cinema where, um, of course, I did have one experience where the, where the, produ where the director actually told me, Yamma, no logic, ma, only magic. This is what he actually tells me. But <laughs> I did have films where I have done roles which I'm very, very proud of. Canada Cinema, which has done both uh, in terms of box office returns, very well and critically acclaimed ones, which requires a strong female character. Come on, you cannot be critically acclaimed without having strong female characters. But you can't deny that there's been a systematic stereotyping of women, the leading ladies. You know, uh, it's been very cliched for years and years. You know? Well, I would just say historically cinema, uh, theatre, dance, the arts have always been considered taboo for women. I mean, it, it's a fact. So the moment you get into such a uh, into uh, an area like that, you're always considered that bad woman. Whether you're an editor, whether you're an actor, whether you're the, uh, maybe the costume girl, whether you're the makeup, everybody is a bad girl who's... And this is an attitude that needs to change. And I think the only way this attitude can change is by more women entering cinema. It is not only as actors, but as... Uh, as even gaffers, why are there no gaffers, women gaffers in our country? Gaffers being the light. You go abroad, women are carrying lights, women are doing everything. So this is, I think this is the attitudinal change that needs to come. First, women should not themselves believe that this is a kind of taboo, bad area. And also bad, bad reputation. Only, it's only the bad girls who go into cinema. But that is because 
like example this interview so somebody is going to bad characterless girls no but no. if yeah. if if somebody is going to listen to what shruti just said obviously her parents would probably object her from entering the film industry and that is how the word spreads that the film industry is a bad place which probably in turn is making this happen that the very few girls in cinema you know the way to do this is to professionalize you have to have training institutes you have to have places where women come learn study uh, enter Uh, as professionals, professional, these are so. not uh, fly-by-night things. These, it's a very, very wonderful, satisfying, great profession, as we all know. I agree. I you agree. You know, it, it's such a wonderful profession. But we, uh, uh, I mean, it's these stories that seem to be. But I would say that the way to do it is uh, professionalize. Why don't you have professional uh, casting uh, mechanisms in India? It's all about are, oh, I like this are, guy. There are oh, professional like casting. Now they are. Now they are. They are yeah. coming up. Yeah. They are. But then I would also say that keeping quiet is not the answer right now. The hashtag Me Too came up for a reason. Whatever said and done, it did good. Yeah. The I mean, one the more followed, number of people, more number yes. of actresses that come out will really help. Who said awareness is bad? I, I I think yes, you can doubt the truth to it all. You can. it's your personal choice but awareness is not bad speaking up the truth is not bad and in fact it gives more women who are going to follow us tomorrow uh i want more women. i want to be an editor after looking at that's that's how girls would probably think it inspires them and i think that's so important you know this has been an intense discussion um uh, but we are going to do a little show and tell as we discussed earlier just going to give you a glimpse of how men are perceived in the industry what they are supposed to do on the big screen and what our leading ladies are expected to do you know so i'll request pranita to play the leading lady and you're going to play the leading man yeah yeah totally. just just watch the expressions guys and this happens over and over and over and over again in every film that you see not only bollywood or hollywood or tollywood we're going to play a big hindi track with one of the biggest superstars of hindi cinema the biggest superstars of hindi cinema and one of the top actresses of the country and what are they expected to do on screen just going to give you a glimpse so this is now about content i think <laughs> yeah. which is a never ending discussion actually <laughs> if we can take center stage a round of applause guys let's going to do a little show and tell okay guys sushant so forced us to do this <laughs> so yeah she's like the guy जोर जोर से ओ आह की आवाज है आती हर रोर से मैं तो चलो प्ले द गाय प्ले द गाय यू हैव टू प्ले द गाय होश वाले भी मन होश आए यू ऑल हैव एनी सजेशंस व्हाट दे डू एज अ गाय आई रियली डोंट नो बिकॉज़ इट्स वेरी सैड आई हैवंट वॉचड द सॉन्ग यू डोंट हैव टू डू एनीथिंग यू जस्ट हैव टू गिव सम एटीट्यूड एंड स्टैंड अप विद हिम चलो सुशांत लुक आई आई कांट आई कांट डू बट या डू यू वांट टू अटेम्प्ट दैट अगेन सिंस आई थिंक यू वर शी वाज टोटली इनटू कैरेक्टर Point yeah, you have to do it again. Can we cue that song again? Okay, one more time. I have one person who do this very well. There's Sumukhi Suresh in the house. <laughs> who? Sumukhi Suresh, say hi. So she is one of my most oh, favorite yeah. actors. She is amazing. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can have you on stage. Come, 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 come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Round of applause. Sumukhi. I love her comedy. Why, why, love why, 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 her. Yes. Guy? while we dance so so you have to be the guy the, the quintessential guy. yeah this work this yeah. works okay, okay so uh, i'm just going to quickly say sumukhi suresh is one of the very few stand up comedians She's female stand up comedians in our country today and uh, i personally i'm a huge fan of her work and we just i was lucky to work with her in a recent film of ours called humble politician nagraj yeah. so yeah let's go yeah okay so i need to play a guy for yeah this. you need to play the guy done yes Le- let's do this now let's see come on now yeah. come on cue the song angdaiyan leti hu main jab zor zor se जब जोर जोर से वो आह की आवाज है आती हर रोर से मैं तो चलो इस खतर के मच जाए बिग राउंड ऑफ अप्लॉज गाइस आई लाइक हाउ इट कम्स नेचुरली या इट इज पिक्टोरियल डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ दिस इट ऑब्वियसली गेट्स वर्स 
Thank you. That was my performance. <laughs> Thank you. She's coming up next, so do watch out for her. But yeah, as I was saying, and we discussed this, and Shruti brought this up, this song is choreographed by a woman, you know, and it totally objectifies the leading lady. Let's not even talk about the choreography. Let's get down to the lyrics. Yeah. You know what? Katakale sahiya? Chicken say. What? Alcohol say. Are you know the song. Who is it? Awesome. Everybody's yes, doing this. Very good. <laughs> even the expressions in the beginning, the ahs and the oohs, and you know, that's, that's become like a staple sound for our item numbers. And that's popular. That sells. That's what we consume. Again, have we made that market over the years, you know, doing that again and again and again and again, that we've created right. that market, which could, be, it could be an alternate market. Exactly. Yeah. So, unfortunately, the maximum number of people coming to the theatres are men, especially in the BC centres. So, obviously, to play to the galleries, filmmakers are going to make movies which impress them, which have content, which will have them, which will, you know, be called their enjoyment. So, that, it's, it's all like a chain, I guess. So, demand and supply. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say that half the time the trouble is that public spaces are just not available for women. How many women can go, uh, two women go together and see a film or a single woman go and see a film? So, I mean, this is all too inextricably linked with a patriarchal society, with a very deeply, deeply ingrained patriarchal society, which is, uh, so it becomes a vicious cycle. You think the audience wants it, the audience get it, and they get want more of it. So, again, I, I'm sorry to sound a bit like a stuck record. It's only the presence of women in cinema that can change this. I agree. But, you know, is it difficult for you to sustain in the industry being a woman if you say no to these things? Can you really afford to say no to these item yes. numbers Very, or these shots? So, take my case, for instance. So the most number of films I've done our commercial films, like that's a, that's a genre of films where there is a hero, there, it's an action film. So the heroine clearly has to just play eye candy, where she comes with about four songs and they're about a bunch of scenes. And either her role is like, she's a nice, pretty girl, so what does she do? Uh, nobody cares. Like, does she have a profession? No. Student? Yeah, she could be a student, but she could still wear glamorous clothes to college. So there is no real role definition for her, like she said. All she has to be is bubbly. That's another, uh, you know, glamorous and bubbly. These are two I words hate that, that word. Yeah, these are two words which we have just created in cinema. So you just have to be very happy and just spread happiness, like Little Miss Sunshine. And so uh, most of the films which I have done so far are that. But I guess, uh, I don't know. So at least from my point of view, I think it's hard to say no because the visibility that a film like that will give you is immense. So that is the reason you. Be, be, you have to go on and that is why you have to sign it. So. Interesting that you did say that because as you are saying, what you're saying is our definition of films has become this cliched sort of treatment. But, you know, should it surprise anyone that Dangal is the number one film of all time, you know, without all of this? So content is really king. Shouldn't we look at that, creating content? When you run out of ideas, you keep doing the same thing again and again but and again and again. It, it's not every day that you get a film like that film offered like that. So the most number of films being made are the commercial films and that's what you get offered and also it's, it really depends. So the kind of uh, films you've done so far also sort of decide what you're going to get offered in future. Uh, yeah, okay, go ahead. I was also going to say that uh, perhaps it's uh, an important thing not to look at this as a war just yet. I think it may turn into a war. This is not a war between the sexes. I think this is what has happened is far too deeply ingrained. A lot of uh, people within the industry, in fact, just don't know better. I mean, you don't know how to behave with women. You do not know how to make a film with a different viewpoint. So, um, for example, in Kerala now we form the Women's Cinema in, uh, uh, Collective in Cinema. And these are the issues we are addressing that we are saying, for example, why not have an award for the best female character? You know, there are the Bakel Awards, I don't know if you've heard of them, yeah. uh, where, um, uh, you know, it's not about acting, it's about a character. 
why doesn't the i mean why doesn't somebody look at that aspect of it so these are things that i think need an awareness has also to be built uh, you know in all uh, struggles of this kind i think unless everybody goes along which is what we are trying to say that everybody has to go around, along with this so that they don't get isolated the problem is that you you're not going to uh, speak up if your job is at stake you're going to just keep quiet so the way is to get together and say yeah let's all do this together let's try and evolve mechanisms within our industry and i must say very proudly that the malayalam film industry is uh, we are addressing these questions now maybe it's come up through the women uh, collective it may have come up through the general literacy levels but yeah these are questions that need to be addressed yeah. definitely questions that need to be addressed um, since we are in hyderabad i love prabhas to death i love rajamouli but i was so embarrassed to see that scene when prabhas almost takes tamanna by force you know was that really required in bahubali such an epic film but still that conditioning is there you know that it is acceptable that a woman will fall in love with you if you force yourself onto him right and nobody talks about that because it is an insanely huge hit right we love prabhas we love rajamouli we have a huge lot of respect for those guys but this is unacceptable and is it a time to speak about stuff like this i think that cinema being a reflection of society so certain things that have been included in big films is clearly what the audience wants to see so the aud audience wants to see it which is why it's being made yeah, the audience I I, doesn't I, I, know i think it's the other way there around. can be something else I which can be just scene. as fun as an audience and I, i i really like no, the entertainment no that is a very small section so the it's 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 catering to a huge number of audience where 80% of them would probably not, not even think of see nobody has 80% of them haven't even thought that there is an issue with that concept exactly. so that is so people have fallen in love with it in, yes. in, because that is their and mindset that is the big problem i think yeah that is the problem yeah. so regressive films sell as she said the commercial cinema those which make yeah. which which treat women as derogatory objects of desire forget women which treat characters which treat the whole script as just a business making model they are the ones that probably sell because they have a formula to it two fights two songs one item number uh, fun, one funny character one comedy scene compulsory yeah, in, in fact this I've is been, how they work i've been emailed saying uh, what's your what's my character this is this is this two songs to exactly i've been emailed a synopsis like this like Standing on what sense. you mentioned about one of the most popular Indian cinema of our country, yes. uh, there is one small dialogue that I had written down from a film, and I just would like to read it out. I'm going to sure. do this in English. Okay, so he says, "You see these fat chicks? They are like teddy bears. They are warm. They are they are loyal. No two women can be friends, but a good-looking chick and a fat chick are a deadly combination. Trust me, this friendship will work." he told her to be friends with the fat chick going forward he walks into the lady's hostel and takes her by force and kisses her and says don't worry nobody saw go play antakshari again going forward he slaps her three times for no reasons at all okay so i'm just skipping parts of the film i'm just talking about what happens between the man and the woman eventually he slaps her three times for no reason at all and finally she does not say anything she has her child is pregnant and waits for him till the end of the film this film was one of the highest grossing regional film of 2017 i am so i do not know if any of you know which film i'm talking about i would be very you can name the film that's not a problem you can definitely <laughs> name the film no i'm i'm hoping that you all will go back and uh, watch it it's on amazon prime <laughs> yeah yeah okay ladies we are completely out of time but thank you so much and uh, more power to you and love talking to you hyderabad give it up thank you thank you man